everyone. We're continuing module six, and this is the last section in chapter nine. And then in the next video, we'll go over the last section of module six in chapter 11. So we're going to discuss how to calculate a concentration of a solution after it's been diluted. Um, we'll also see that we can use the same type of calculation to figure out, for instance, how much of a stock solution we need uh, in order to make a new dilute solution. So in a dilution, a solvent, usually water, is added to a solution. And that's going to increase its volume and decrease the concentration of the solution. So for instance, if you've ever bought those concentrated juice mixes at the grocery store, uh, my personal favorite is POG juice or POG juice. <laughs> um, you can pour the concentrate into a larger jar um, and then dilute it with water. So for instance, you might pour one can of concentrated juice into a larger uh, pitcher or jar, and then you can add three cans of water, which will make a total of four cans of orange juice. And then you mix it around. So uh, it's very similar in chemistry. We usually have a stock solution of a chemical or a very concentrated solution. And then we can just pull from that to make more dilute solutions. Um, I used to have to do that in my research. Uh, I had all of these very concentrated solutions of amino acids. And whenever I had to run an experiment, I would just pull from those stock solutions and dilute them to whatever concentration I needed. So that can also save some time instead of having to make a uh, new solution each and every time. All right, so again, in a dilution, water is added. So the volume of the solution increases and the concentration decreases. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that we're not changing the amount of solute in the solution. So the mass of solute in the solution remains the same. So actually, let's go back to our concentrated juice example. In our original picture here, we have a certain amount of actual orange juice. Um, and all we're really doing is adding more water. So the orange juice that we have in that original picture is just going to be more spread out but it's still the same amount of orange juice that's uh, in the original picture. It's just we're spreading out the solute and making it more dilute. So in this picture here, we have, you know, some sort of solid that we're diluting with water and the solute particles are just more spread out when we add the water but the mass of the actual solute itself is still the same, or the amount is still uh, the same. So how do we calculate a new concentration after we dilute a solution? So what we're going to do is use this equation shown below where C1V1 equals C2V2. So C1 is the initial concentration, V1 is the initial volume, and then that will equal C2, the final or dilute concentration, times the final volume. Now again, remember the moles of solute or the amount of solute will stay the same. So if we multiply volume times concentration, that gives us moles of solute, and that will equal 
whatever's on the right hand side. So if we multiply the final concentration by the final volume, we get the same exact amount of moles. So the concentration and the volume are going to adjust in order to make sure we have the same number of moles, if that kind of makes sense. Now, the concentration could be anything. We could use mass percent. Uh, we could use volume percent. We can use molarity. It really doesn't matter which concentration you use because the units are all going to work out at the end. And we'll, we'll see examples of that in a second. So the concentration C may be percent concentration or molarity. Oh, and here's a better figure of what I was trying to explain earlier. I forgot about this slide. <laughs> so again, if we have a concentrated solution uh, the solutes are all really close together, right? But then when we add water, those solute particles are going to spread out more. And there's still the same amount of solute particles, but again, they're just spread out more. So it's only the volume that's changing. Well, and the concentration. All right, so let's do a practice problem. What is the final concentration when 0.5 liters of 6 molar hydrochloric acid solution is diluted to a final volume of 1 liter? Okay, so what this looks like in a figure, so initially we would have um, 0.5 liters of our solution and then uh, the concentration of that solution is 6.0 moles per liter. Then we're going to add enough water so that our final volume is one liter. So that means the solute particles are more spread out and the volume has changed. So what would be the new concentration of that solution? So we're going to first identify C1, V1, and uh, C2, V2. So 0.5 liters is the original or initial volume, and 6 moles per liter is the initial concentration. So that's actually shown down below. We're given the initial concentration and the initial volume. And then we're also told the final volume. So that's shown in our given category. So the only thing that we don't know is the final concentration, C2. So we're going to use that equation we saw before, C1V1 equals C2V2. And we're just going to plug in the values that we've identified and solve for the unknown value. Now, we do want to also make a prediction here. So if we're adding more water to our solution, that means the volume is increasing. And as a result, the concentration should decrease. So we're expecting a smaller concentration at the end of this calculation. So that means we're expecting something less than 6 moles per liter. So at the end of our calculation, if we get something greater than 6, then we know we did something wrong and we should go back and double check our work. Oh, I showed you the results. Okay, so let's plug in for C1, we're going to plug in 6 moles per liter. For V1, we're going to plug in 0 0.50 liters. And then we don't know what C2 is, so we're just going to leave that as a variable. And then we'll multiply that by the final volume, which is 1.0 liters. 
Okay, so now we're just going to rearrange and solve for C2. So we're going to divide both sides by 1.0 liters. Okay, so let's, um, oh, apparently I cannot use my pen. <laughs> All right, so let's see if units cancel appropriately. So one liter cancels on the right-hand side. And then on the left-hand side, liters cancel. So our final unit will be moles per liter, or capital M. So now we just have to multiply 6 by 0.5 and then divide by 1. So C2 will equal 3.0 moles per liter. And that makes sense, right? We're doubling the volume, so that means we're decreasing the concentration by half. Okay, and then here's the solution slide. Now you'll notice here that they've rearranged the equation before they plugged in their values, and you can do that too. Um, it's really just what you're comfortable with and how you like to solve problems. Um, so they divided both sides by uh, V1, or uh, excuse me, V2. And then they just wrote out the new expression for C2. And then they plugged in those values and they got the same answer we did. Okay. So let's do another problem. What is the percent mass over volume of a solution prepared by diluting 10 milliliters of 9% sodium hydroxide to 60 milliliters. So if you wanna try this on your own first, feel free to pause the video and then we'll go over it together. Okay, so let's write out what we're given Okay, so we're told that we're diluting uh, 10 milliliters of 9% sodium hydroxide to 60 milliliters. All right, I'm just gonna write out C1, V1, C2, V2. Okay, so uh, we're told the initial volume and initial concentration. So let's write those in. So we have a 9% mass over volume solution of sodium hydroxide. And then our initial volume is 10 milliliters. And then we're diluting that to 60 milliliters. So that's our final volume. Okay. So that means we do not know our final concentration. So that's what we need to figure out. All right, so I'm just gonna plug in what we have into C1V1 equals C2V2. All right, so our initial concentration is 9%, and then we'll multiply that by our initial volume of 10 milliliters. And then that equals C2 times 60 milliliters. Okay, so if we're diluting a solution from 10 milliliters to 60 milliliters, do we expect the concentration to be greater than or less than the initial concentration? So do we expect the concentration to increase or decrease? decrease because we're increasing the volume. So the concentration has to decrease. All right. So we're going to divide both sides by 60 milliliters. All right. So milliliters will cancel and this is super handy because our final unit will just be a percent. So we don't really have to do anything with the concentration units. 
All right, so we're going to multiply 9 by 10 and then divide that by 60. All right, so I get a value of 1.5%. And all of my values here had three sig figs, so I'm going to use three sig figs in my answer as well. All right, let's see if we did it right. So here are the solution slides, and yes, we got the same answer as the solution slide. Let's do one more problem. What is the molarity of a solution prepared by diluting 0.18 liters of 0.6 molar nitric acid, HNO3, to 0.54 liters? So again, if you want to try this on your own first, you can pause the video, and then when you unpause, we'll go over it together. All right, let's write out what we're given to start. So I'm just gonna write out all of my variables. Okay. So we're trying to figure out, okay, we're diluting 0.18 liters of 0.6 molar nitric acid. So that's our initial volume and initial concentration. So I'm going to put those in their appropriate categories here. All right. And then we're diluting that to a final volume of 0.54 liters. All right, so again, we don't know what C2 is. So let's write out our dilution equation and we'll plug in all of those values. So C1, is 0.6 moles per liter, and we're multiplying that by 0 0.180 liters. And then we don't know what C2 is, but V2 is 0 0.54 liters. Okay, so similar to our problems from before, we're just going to divide both sides by the final volume. All right, so that cancels on the right-hand side. And then the unit of liters cancels on the left-hand side. So we're left with molarity, which is what we want. And we're just going to multiply 0.6 by 0.18 and divide that by 0.54. All right, my calculator tells me that that is 0 0.2 moles per liter. And everything had three sig figs again, so I made sure that my answer had three sig figs. All right, and this makes sense, again, because we're diluting the solution, so the concentration should go down. So we went from 0.6 moles per liter to 0.2 moles per liter. So that checks out. Now, one other way that you can check if you did this right is you can plug in C2 into the equation above. So you can plug in all of the values now that you know them all and see if uh, they equal each other. So you could calculate C1 times V1 and see if that equals C2 times V2. Okay, and here are the solution slides. All right, so that's it for our dilution equations. Next time we're going to talk about the pH scale. So this is going back to acids and bases, um, and we're going to see how we can identify or rank acidic solutions and basic solutions. So we'll talk about that next time.